All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about balans and ununs. And these happen to be four to one balans and ununs. And these four to ones are used when we want to convert impedance from a 50 ohm coaxial cable to a 200 ohm load. In this case, being amateur radio operators, our loads are typically antennas. Uh, to simulate the antennas, I'm using these resistors in series. These are 100 ohm resistors in series. It comes out to a 200 ohm load. Towards the end of the video, we're going to test these with an anode VNA to see what our SWR match is. By determining the SWR match, we're going to see how well these transform impedance. Pretty exciting stuff, right? I want to talk a little bit about why we would use these. So with the Balan, we would use these on symmetrical antennas to match our coaxial cable, which is unbalanced, to balanced symmetrical antennas like dipoles, doublets, and yagis. Over here, we have our unun, -un, which is unbalanced to unbalanced. So we're going to use an unbalanced load with our unbalanced coaxial cable. Antennas that uh, meet this criteria typically are things like verticals, uh, N-fed wire antennas, and... Um, stuff along those lines so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to select the materials what i used for this we're going to go through the build and then we're going to do the testing so stay tuned you don't want to miss that all right so let's talk a little bit about the core selection that we used for this now what i'm working on is a project where we're designing a smaller portable antenna and what i wanted to do is use a smaller core so in this particular case, what we're going to do is take a look at these. This is a uh, FT140. And what that means is a ferrite toroidal core, and it is 1.4 inches across in diameter. This is a Mix 43, which is a pretty good broadbanded ferrite core. Then we have these 130, so that means it's 1.3 inches in diameter, Mix 6 powdered iron core. And then this is a Mix 2 powdered iron core, and this is a T130 as well. So those are the same size. For this video, we're going to put these to the side, and we're going to test these. Now, whenever I wrap toroidal cores, I use these um, zip ties. Maybe not these exact zip ties, but just zip ties in general, because I use that to hold my wire on, so I get a nice, and tight, clean wrapping. And then for the wire that we're going to use, uh, I'm a big fan of this Bianteco wire. And here we have two different spools of magnet wire. This one's red. It doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. Basically, it's a solid core enamel, uh, enamel coated wire. Uh, it's a copper wire. This is an 18 gauge. And I would say just use whatever you got. So and that, and that goes for the cores too, right? So if, if you only have these yellow cores or these red cores, just use what you got, test it out, and see if it meets your application or your needs. Uh, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to have to wrap a different type of core. Anyhow, these are this is this green one is 20 gauge, and then this is 18 gauge, and you may be able to see a little bit of a difference in there. So we're going to use 18 gauge, and some folks are like, well, why use an 18 gauge? It costs more money, blah, 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 blah. I like the 18 gauge a little bit better because RF travels on the outside of your wire, and I get a little bit more surface area out of the 18 than I do the 20. If all you got is 20, that's going to be fine, but uh, I prefer 18. So here are two cores, and we're going to roll one of these in a Balan configuration and one of these in an Unun configuration. But you start off the same way, and the number of winds can make a difference. In this, I've just got eight winds on each one, and I found that to work reasonably well. I don't have an issue with it. Uh, some designs say go all the way up to 18 lines. Some, some say you don't need to go that high. Just do it what uh, works for you. But anyhow, what I did is I just took two, it's called a bifiler winding. So it's two wires. And I used a zip tie to hold it down. Did 18 wraps. You can see front to back. To count a wrap, it's every time the wire goes through the center of the core. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be eight windings. Now, one of the things I really hate about enamel wire it's got a bunch of great qualities, but the one that I hate is, is that you need to scrape the enamel coating off of these. And what I always use is just a regular old box cutter type uh, razor blade. And then I just go ahead and I scrape this down. And you want to make sure that you scrape all the enamel off your leads. Uh, and you want that enamel off so you can get a good connection, good conductivity. The enamel acts as an insulator, so if you don't get it off, you're going to have problems. So definitely make sure you pay attention and do a good job scraping that off. And again, just use this and a couple passes, a lot more than that, and you'll be good to go. 
Okay, we've scraped these wires uh, pretty good, and uh, you have to be really careful to get all the enamel off. I can't stress that enough. And a little pro tip is the Dremel is your friend, so I used this, and it made it a lot easier than scraping with the razor blade. Now, for both of those windings, what we need to do is we need to take our center conductors, which are here and here. And um, I shouldn't call them center conductors. They're really the center, the center wires. And what I want to do is I want to take this one, I want to bend it over and get it to touch this one. And let me get this one out of the way. And then what I want to do is I want to carefully wind this one around a few times. And I want to try to make that as tight as possible as I'm doing it. And once we get a few winds on there, I'm going to trim this off. Let's just do that now. There's no turning back once you do that. All right, so now we got that trimmed off. And then I can tighten this up a little bit if I want with like a pair of needle nose or something. There we go. Just a little tighter on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that to the second core, and then I'm going to hit this with a little bit of solder, and we'll be right back. Okay, so you can see that uh, we soldered both of these cores. You can see a little bit of solder on there. And then what I want to do is a quick sanity check. So I've got my multimeter and I have it set for testing continuity. And now the way that this is configured is that we should have continuity between all of these wires. So let me just go ahead and... I don't know if you can hear that or not, but we're getting continuity there, there, and there. So we're good to go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why you would choose one of these over the other. And what we're looking at on this side is a four to one ballon, and what we're looking at over here is a four to one anun. And when we talk about this, the ballon is for connecting your unbalanced transmission line to a balanced load. In our case, that balanced load is gonna be an antenna, specifically a symmetrical antenna, like a dipole or a Yagi. So when you come down here and you take a look at the schematic, and this is where it gets a little bit confusing, you can see our inductor is highlighted here and it's tapped in the center right and so when we take a look at our core it's tapped in the center now so for the ballon is when the shield right here is connected to the ground through the tap center now on our un, -un we use these to connect an unbalanced transmission line like a coaxial cable to an unbalanced antenna like an n-fed or an off-center fed dipole there's other use cases for both of these, but they're the two that we want to cover in this video. Now, when we take a look at this schematic here, you can see the center tap of our inductor is connected down here to the uh, center conductor of our coaxial cable. What makes this an un-un versus a ballon is the shield is directly connected to the ground of our antenna. Over here on the ballon, it is the center conductor that is directly connected to the uh, element or the radiator of our antenna. That's the difference. That's all it is. And the use case for these are different as we just explained. If you use them in the wrong way, right? So if you hook your dipole up to an un, -un it's not going to perform as well as if you hooked your dipole up to a ballon. If you connect your N-fed antenna or your vertical to a ballon, it's not going to perform as well as it would if you connected it to an un, -un. And the reason is all about the grounding. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so here's our ballon and here's our anun. And let's just talk a little bit about the difference. This is the connection that is going to mimic our connection to our coaxial cable or our unbalanced line. And that's the same case for both of them. When you take a look at this one, you can see that the center tap is directly connected to the shield. Over on the anun, you can see that the center tap is directly connected to the center conductor of our coaxial cable. That's the difference. What I want to do now is I want to test the ability of these cores to actually transform um, impedance from 200 ohms down to 50 ohms. In order to do that, I've just taken these two resistors. Each one of these is 100. Actually, they're like 99.4, which is close enough for the demonstration. And I've connected them in series, which gives us right around a 200 ohm load. In reality, it's around 199.2, something like that. Anyhow, what we're going to do is we're going to connect this across the, um, the uh, wires coming off of our cores. We're going to set that up, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do a quick test on the Nano VNA. Use this one. All right, so what we have here is our ballon, and then we have our antenna element. This is the uh, load that we're using, these resistors. 
and it's going across our center conductor and our ground. And then we have our un un, and then this one is going across our antenna and then the connection directly to the shield of our unbalanced cable. So what I want to do now is I'm going to connect these up to a nano VNA and then I'm going to show you on the computer what the impedance transformation looks like from a 200 ohm load to a 50 ohm unbalanced coaxial transmission line. Okay, let's just talk real quickly about the nano VNA. We have a nano VNA that's been calibrated and we are doing an S11 or reflection measurement. And that means out of channel zero, we're gonna send a signal down and into our core. Let me get this one out of the way. And it's gonna go into our core and it's going to see what the reflection is off of this load. It's gonna come back and we're gonna measure it here on the nano VNA. So here's a nano VNA saver. It's the software that we use to connect to our nano VNA. If you look in the upper left hand corner, you can see our sweep control box. We're doing a sweep from 6.5 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz. And that's because we are looking at using this on an antenna designed to run from uh, 7 megahertz, which is a 40 meter band through the 10 meter band. To increase my number of data points, I have the segment set to 10. So we went ahead and we ran the sweep, and then the chart we were using here, you can see, is an S11 VSWR SWR measurement. And you can see down here at uh, 6.5 megahertz, at uh, marker number one, we are at 1.0, well, 1 to 1.084, which is pretty good SWR. And then over here on the high side, when we take a look at that, uh, we are at 1 to 1.219. Now, part of the reason why we may get some increase as we go higher in frequency is that these uh, resistors that we're using are not non-inductive. So it means there's some induction in there that can cause some extra reactance at higher frequency. Not a big deal because even at 1 to 1 1.2, it's a pretty dang good SWR and we're not worried about it. Uh, in case I forgot to mention it, this is the ballon. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and I want to set this as my current reference. And then I'm going to connect the un un. We're going to sweep that and see what differences we see. Okay, the un un is connected, and I'm going to hit the sweep button, and we're going to run the sweep. And then you can see that the SWR is a little bit higher here. So that means that our impedance transformation is not quite as good. And when we go down to uh, 6.5 megahertz at, uh, before the 40 meter band, we are at 1 to 1.088, which is still pretty good. And then on the high side, past the 10 meter band at 30 megahertz, we're looking at 1 to 1.262. In both cases, I think we're pretty happy with this. So hopefully that helps clear up some of the confusion between a ballon and an un, -un and gives you a practical demonstration of how to build these things and test them. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.